What's going on, PBO people? It's me, Ben, of the Alabama Alakazams, analyst Alakazams, retired, with a new guest this week for the power rankings of the Stargazer Division. Introduce yourself. That's me, Vancouver Valiants. I'm here. I, uh, it's probably my first time doing this, so hopefully I'll do a few more this season. It is the Vancouver Valiants. Uh-huh. And we are here, of course, with Professor Soaring. Hello! And with that, we are going to get right into the rankings. Starting off with the number 14 team, the Norwalk Neuverns, who just had their game earlier today when we are recording this. And it also had a massive team shakeup, so the team that they have is no longer the team you see on the screen. But um, it was an interesting game for sure. It ended up being a 5 though. Uh, in favor of his opponent, uh, the Tennessee Tyranitars. Uh, six kills go to Tarapagos. And it was just a, a really unfortunate showing for Norwalk, where I think kind of the deficiencies of the team were kind of put on full display, where you had, you know, multiple Pokemon who end up doing absolutely nothing, including Comfey and Mousehold. And really, in the end, Jirachi ends up doing nothing. It only clicks U-turn. Um... And it kind of like is going okay for uh, Norwalk. They're getting some plays right throughout the game. They're using Clawsire and Incineroar well to position themselves into a pretty correct position. It looks like if Jirachi Scarf, it might be able to pull off a win. And then just, he gets kind of caught out on Terrapagos, makes a few bad switches, in my opinion, to lose his Iron Hands AV, uh, to lose his Incineroars, Heavy Duty Boots. And then decides to bring Clodzire out on Terrapagos when both sides know it's not an unaware Clodzire. And it kind of just ends with, you know, a rapid spin for a speed boost, a calm mind for another boost. And just, you know, the standard Terrapagos set with one calm mind sweeps the whole team. So a, a lack of game planning there for sure on uh, Norwalk's part. Um, not bringing Sinistra really ended up hurting because obviously Sinistra pre-Terra hard walls that set. Exactly. That Earth Power... Uh, like, that would never sweep. Um, that Earth Power Star Storm would never sweep against uh, ju just a regular Sinistra. So really unfortunate that Sinistra did, ended up not coming. Kind of, you know, some some prep issues. Some good play at the beginning, some potential shown. But then in the in the end game, definitely some play issues once uh, his heavy-duty boots got stolen by the Tinkaton. It, 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 it was really just an unfortunate display. Uh, you got anything to say, Vancouver? Yeah, I watched the I watched the game earlier. I didn't get to catch it live, but um, I did watch it after the fact. I mean, Tropico's just it, it really just kind of messed him up. I don't know. Maybe he just he didn't prep for it like a hundred percent. I know he did change his team. Did, did the it did go th like it's not like the this new team goes into effect next week. Like he changed it before. Um, this week happened. So like during the grace period, is that what happened? No, he changed it. He, ch he changed uh -huh. it after it's for next it's for okay okay to, to so so he did have so he, he did have sinistra available for yeah he had sinistra okay. he had iron hands like iron hands was in this game yeah um, i mean uh, i just i i think because what what did where did we where did you rank this and this power was 13 rankings? so it only this went down 13? one spot because okay. i think the team is also pretty flawed so really he's sticking around the same spot yeah well because uh, when i when i think about it i'm like um i know norwek is a He's a good player. I, I have had faced him a few times. I, I just because I look at his team, I'm like, it's hard to see where the like. I, I guess it, I, I don't really see much like offensive pressure. Maybe besides like a like a Specs Neuvern or I know Jirachi can be really annoying some weeks. I know he got Comfey and Sinisha, but if it's not it's not Terra Comfey, I don't know. Um, what he yeah. changed his team to, so I guess we'll have to see what what, what it looks it, like. It's like week. a night. The the Comfey's gone. The uh, Clodzire, I think, is gone. I, he has like Annihilate now, which I think is pretty good. He lost Iron Hands though. He has a uh, Raging Bolt. He has Glide Score, and he has like Slitherwing as well. Okay, yeah, that's a complete shakeup of this team. So that, yeah, that, he used I, all his transactions. I, I like. I like the those additions too. So maybe next week with a with a new team, you can pull yeah, it. He victory. hasn't fully he hasn't fully made clear what his Terra captain is though, because he did get rid okay. of all three. Or, or actually, he kept the Hisuian Avalug. So the Hisuian Avalug is one of them. I think the other one might be Slitherwing, but he hasn't confirmed that yet. Mm -hmm. So we'll just have to yeah. wait and see. But for now, 
I do think this was the most disappointing performance of the of the week. So uh, I do have it down here, fourteenth, and also in combination with where he was previously. That's fair. And we'll move on to the thirteen. All right, at 13, we have the Pittsburgh Scissors, who played uh, not horribly against uh, the Sauta Chimps. In fact, at the beginning, I thought they were playing quite well, getting their Gouging Fire in to apply pressure. The Gouging Fire ended up getting two kills because they didn't really have a good answer to it. But, uh, you know, their DO defense did get uh, stuck early because of Spirit Shackle and eventually sacked to a Decidueye. They were kind of just sitting around getting hazards up, but they didn't have spikes, so all they could do was set up Stealth Rocks, which was unfortunate. Uh, I can't blame him too for this too much because I forgot about it in the uh, pickums when I was describing the matchup. But he did forget that Orthworm uh, doesn't resist or does isn't immune to Earthquake from Exodrill because Exodrill does have Mold Breaker. So you know, I guess that's my bad for not saying it in the pickums. But also, like uh, when you're looking at your own matchup, it's something you gotta you gotta you gotta look out for. I would say. Uh, I I do th I just think this team's pretty bad, if I'm being honest. Like, Tauros, Paldea, Aqua isn't, like, a great Terra Captain. We saw it in that game. Like, it can put on some pressure. It's not horrible. But it's not, like, overwhelmingly good, in my opinion, like some of the other, like, super high-tier Terras can be. Uh, a lot of the Pokemon kind of just sat around doing not very much this match. Like, Orthworm ended up doing nothing. Porygon Z, it got a nasty plot up, but then it clicked Tri-Attack, trying to get some sort of status on Exodrill and set a, like, trying to 2 KO with Shadow Ball, maybe. And it ended up doing nothing. Uh, you know, Torn T really didn't even get to do much this game, except just, like, switch around. I feel like this team has a, somewhat of a passivity problem outside of gouging, which is why gouging has to, like, pick up the kills. Because, like, Florges, it, it, like if Florges is left and, like, Dio Defense, the, all, a lot of these mods just aren't doing enough damage, enough raw damage output to really get something going. Uh, I, I think this team itself needs a bit of a shakeup. His play itself was, you know, just okay. I think at the end he was kind of getting uh, uh, played against a little bit with uh, the, the Kiram and, you know, the chilly reception to the Kiram to get the defense boost. He was trying to get a Toro sweep working, but it couldn't work because he also didn't have a fighting move to hit Kiram. So Kiram couldn't even die to the Tauros that was setting up the bulk ups. Um, I, I, I think, you know, this was just a, a, a combination of team and then, like, a little bit of a prep issue. And then the play was actually, like, you know, it was decent. It wasn't horrible. But uh, I, I think in the end, uh, the team let him down a bit this this week. And it, I, I think it, it proves the deficiencies that we talked about uh, in the preseason power rankings. What yeah, do you think, I, 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 I see what you mean. I... Um, during the, the match when I, when I was watching it too, he was just, um, he had like a couple different mons that like, you try to like come in and set up like, um, Tauros, Porygon Z and obviously Gouging Fire. Um, I think especially with Gouging Fire, I did use it, um, a couple of seasons ago. It was, I think it was one of the kill leaders, but I, I just, I, I love that thing a lot. I know it, it maybe he can make his build his team a little bit more around gouging fire to like get it um set it up a little bit more <clears throat> so it can actually like it could just i mean that thing just wins the match most of the time too so um i'm not gonna say like it's it's an easy win button though it's very similar to like zardex um so something like that like if he shakes up his team and like builds around it a little bit more i do like some of the pieces though like i like um i like torn T. Um, I don't know about Deoxys defense too much because uh, at least from this match, um, obviously it's it's mostly a support mod. It didn't really do anything. It kind of just it kind of just got walled by Decidueye for the most. It part. got it, it got trapped yeah. by Spirit Shackle and died. Yeah. So it didn't have teleport, which was interesting because usually yeah. that thing carries teleport to get out of situations like that because it's so passive. Yeah. Um, I, I I do think like gouging. Like I think he could have won this game with gouging if he set up at the right time. It's just, he either switched when, like, he had a Dragon Dance up on Kiram, and I think he thought the Kiram was Scarf, so he switched. But I think if he didn't switch there and just tried to call that it wasn't Scarf, uh, he might have had a chance. Because I, I think the Kiram, I, I, I don't know for sure because I don't get the sets. I think the Kiram ended up not being Scarf or something. But, um, in the end, uh, or it may, I think it was Scarf. The way, the way he was playing it, it was Scarf. Um, in, in in the end, I I do think this team just has like a composition issue going on. 
Yeah, I don't know if it is a uh, it 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 wasn't scarf because uh, the the Tauros was faster than it. Was the Tauros plus one speed though? I no, it was, it only had but a bulk up. No, it didn't. Okay, have a so yeah, speed. yeah, so it confirmed wasn't mm -hmm. scarf. So the the turn there was some turn in the game I believe where it was under sun the gouging with a plus one boost. If it just clicks Dragon Claw, it probably you probably he probably wins the game. Yeah, you're pulling up the game now. Uh. I think uh, Floor just at some point gets a uh, gets a sunny day up. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so we're looking at the game that dies. I think it's before this, if I had to guess. Yeah, it's like turn twenty-four. Yeah, it's, it's turn, turn 24. twenty-four. Go to turn, turn twenty-four. 20. Go to the first turn and just yeah, turn twenty-four. Yeah, so he's he's got the the that, and then he dragon claws and kills the quillfish. This is all good. Like this is when he's winning, right? He goes Florges. Moonblast. Chili. Out to the CGI. The floor just goes for sunny day. And he baton passes hard out into gouging. And then he gets the para and gets the DD. Mm. And then he kills this. And then I think this guy goes hard Kirim. Oh, it's because of the tailwind. Oh, that, that's why, yeah, yeah. The, the tailwind. I, I, for, I forgot completely about the tailwind. So that's why he switches. So that's our bad. I forgot about the tailwind completely. Good thing we went back and looked at that. He went for he went for blizzard on the gouging, though. Yeah, if which... he missed the blizzard, it would have been interesting. Um, yeah, I also don't think that... Would that... If, killed i don't know i mean it's neutral yeah, i'm guessing it's specs it, i'm guessing yeah, it it's might be specs, specs. yeah because uh, yeah. isn't blizzard we, we, we like can... isn't blizzard lower accuracy too in the sun no like, i no? i thought that's that not one of those moves and then okay. there, there's the big play with the orthworm and the yeah the mold, mold breaker. breaker so you, you know uh the gouging like could have won i think but obviously it couldn't do it there like we were thinking so um I, I think trying to get gou yeah like I, I think instead of going Porygon Z if you went gouging at some point, um, uh, Porygon Z felt pretty useless. It really couldn't do anything to Excadrill. Uh, but it's yeah, like, we can get we can get rid of this game now. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't need to see the rest of it. So have it pulled up for uh, the recording as well. So I'm just gonna keep it there if y'all don't mind, or do you want me to minimize All right. it? That's fine. Or I can minimize the other one. Right. Yeah, yeah, minimize it. Um. But yeah, and then and then Kiram got three kills at the end. It, it, it was a you know a smart end game from everybody for sure. He, uh and and then the tailwind was obviously smart from him. So you know he he played his outs. He did what he had to do. Kiram ended up doing what he needed to do in that game. Um. But overall, just just uh, I th I I think the team needs a bit of a shake up from Scizors. I guess is my main takeaway as we move on to the number twelve team. I think this is a big drop. We have the Line City Leech Life, um, and this team. This is kind of the opposite. This team I think is actually pretty decent. It does have Fortress, and you know, I like Fortress. I think like. Scarf Palmot was a good bring, although, you know, making your two cannon the Terra I ended up doing nothing but just spamming Roost. I think, you know, two cannon wasn't the, the greatest um, bring, if I'm being honest. Uh, I, I don't really know what its exact function was. It had Brick Break, I know. Um, he just played pretty poorly at the beginning. At the He was kind of sacking his mons to uh, uh, Dio Speed, trying to get his rocks up with Hydreigon, trying to, you know, set himself up in a good way. Goes hard Gardevoir, ends up losing his Gardevoir. Uh, it, it's just a bad look how he uh, ended up losing all his Pokemon at the very beginning, really putting him on the back foot, pretty much unable to do anything. And then he got, you know, called out uh, that he was going to click an electric move on the Garchomp. And then Empoleon kind of just was able to, you know, sit around, essentially, at the very end of the game. And really, the only thing that was putting on any offensive pressure the whole game was two cannon. It really felt like he had no chance of winning the whole time, even while, like, everything was switching around. The, you know, the Fortress and Ursaluna tried to do something, but they really couldn't in any, like, major way. Uh, 
Zarud ended up, you know, getting some kills at the end there. But the only thing that felt like it was doing anything was Palmot. And it just ended up that at the end, that, uh, it, there was really nothing he could do. I, I think, like, at the end, he was playing okay, trying to play his outs, but he just put himself in such a hole at the beginning. And, uh, you know, the two cannon being there, doing nothing. The fortress being there, doing really nothing, except exploding to kill itself. That's really all fortress is good for. I think fortress is a very bad Pokemon in the end. And uh, it, it, it was just a, a pretty bad showing, which is why he dropped so hard. A, a pretty a pretty bad uh, display from this one. Uh, I, I like the Palmot set. I think, you know, he had some unique sets. I saw the Gardevoir set after. It was really cool. It was like Endure Custap. I, I think that's really cool. I think uh, Sh uh, Shadow, the, the coach of this team, has a lot of potential and is going to bounce back and probably end up much higher in these rankings. But after the week one showing, he did have to drop uh, a decent degree here. What do you think, yeah. Vancouver? Yeah, I I know you you're a big fortress hater. Um, I guess I don't I don't mind it too much depending on the matchup. Uh, I know this week. I mean, it does. What's his What's his other hazard removal that he has? Does two? He doesn't have, have like any defog. No, that, yeah. that's his only hazard. I yeah, think it's, I mean, like, two cannon might get defog. I'd have to check. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely there's definitely other options still available. I think I know. Let me see here. I'm looking at the the draft board. Two cannon What's... does get defog, so you could do that. Okay, so yeah, two cannon does get defog. It's not like uh, that's no. Oh, that's, that's not check regular. Yeah, it does not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's also. So... I guess Palma is his higher tier tier. I was wondering if he had like a um, if he was utilizing the new. Like Terra system, yeah, he is. I mean, I know that we're not allowing revival wrestling, right? We can't. No, we're not. No, against my protest, we're not. <laughs> because I wanted it. That's okay. I know you. I know you love Rapska. You you want to use? Yeah. It. Also, some like mm -hmm. really crazy brings here, in my opinion, in this game. No Golden Go. I thought Golden Go was really good in this game. In fact, the yeah. best Pokemon in this game. So bring like sometimes there's just like. No matter how like cool your sets are or what your tech is, sometimes you overthink. Because like he was saying, he was preparing for uh, Orange, preparing for Webs. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So he was like counter teaming the counter team. Sometimes your Pokemon that are good are good for a reason. You know what I mean? Like sometimes Two Cannon just doesn't have the value Golden Go has. I thought Golden Go was literally the best Pokemon in this match. It not coming is crazy. No Ogre Pond Wellspring also... Like, two of your top three picks aren't here. You know what I mean? Like, you, in your first game, you don't have your Golden Go. You don't have your Ogre Pond Wellspring. Yeah, Both I Pokemon that I thought, like, weren't horrible this match. I can um, see how what um, Ogre Pond Wellspring 2 definitely could have applied more offensive pressure than probably, yeah. like, two cannon or something else like that. I don't know if... Especially going into a team with, with um, what, like, Valiant... Uh, what, Valiant, Garchomp, um, even like, uh, what, Deoxys Speed, which is which is faster, gets fighting moves. I don't know if Hydreigon was the the best spring. Yeah, I mean, the Hydreigon seemed like a lead, kind of like, just get damage off and die thing. Yeah, I mean, he, he brought it with he brought it with Stealth Rocks, though. I feel like you could have just achieved the same thing with Swampert, and it would have been bulkier and might have been able to do a few more things um, than yeah, Hydreigon was It, able it to seems do. like a few role reversals here this week. Uh, I mean, maybe there was some secret tech to it, like some reason why it was Hydreigon with the rocks and was the lead, but it ended up, we'd end up not seeing it just because Dio Speed put on such immediate pressure that he instantly lost two Pokemon and he was just instantly on the back foot completely to the point he had to start roost spamming, but the roost spam was actually getting him anywhere because he wasn't healing enough compared to the damage that was done. Um... And then, like, when one of your four or three remaining Mons is Fortress, it's really like you have two Mons. So, like, Fortress ended up just blowing himself up yeah. more than anything. And he didn't even kill what he was blowing himself up on either. It was, I think Zarud took the damage and didn't even die. Yeah, so it's like... I don't know. I, the, the game was interesting. Because, like, like, I thought Blood Moon had a pretty good matchup. Evidently it did. It ended up getting, like, the uh, the only kill because he didn't have a switch into it. I wish he took advantage of Blood Moon a little earlier in the match, maybe. Um, I, I I just think this was like you know, a bit of a a, a mons that were brought issue, 
more so Golden Go than Wellspring. I really think Golden Go should have... And I think uh, Vicavolt, even if he was prepared for webs, I think Vicavolt was good here just naturally. Especially if it was Terra Electric, which I know you don't have. But if you could have been Terra Electric, like, preseason picked it, I would have been happy with that too. Um, but I thought, like, Terra Vicavolt was good here just naturally, uh, personally. Because he could be Fairy too, and then you're super effective on the Garchomp, and then he really doesn't have a good answer. Um, and I thought Golden Go was, like, insanely good here, and it not coming. Like, a Spadef Golden Go not coming, uh, because Spadef Golden Go would have eaten a Shadow Ball, uh, from Dio Speed, and killed it with Shadow Ball back. Um, it's it just an unfortunate situation all around, but I'm sure he's gonna bounce back and climb up these rankings once again. With no, that, we'll move on. I, I was oh, gonna you... say, one more thing, I was like, I do see a good like a lot of potential in this team i like his first few picks yeah the, has, has better offensive good. pressure than the, the i think the first couple teams we looked at yeah i think um, this team's actually like good usable like really good yeah that's uh, that's what i would say about it all right let's move on to the next team at 11. Oh, this is a massive drop, I think, from, uh, I want to say 11, or I uh, 3 down to 11. Uh, absolutely just stonewalled by, uh, Vileplume this game. He didn't have the offensive pressure at all to break through Mug's team. It felt like he lost Dragapult, uh, almost instantly, unfortunately. Um, it kind of just felt like Vileplume, you know, Mug was just sitting around, which is what she does a lot. She likes to just sit around and, you know, uh, chip you down slowly with all her fat guys, set up screens. He at least had Brick Break, so he knew that, you know, that's the kind of thing Mug likes to do. Um, but he didn't have enough setup, in my opinion. Because, like, when you're facing Mug, you want to bring a lot of setup for all her fat mons. Uh, the Rillaboom wasn't set up. It was only really Hitmon Lee. The Scizor wasn't set up. Uh, Rillo so like Pokemon like Rillaboom ended up just doing nothing because Corviknight's a such a hard counter to it, and uh, it really ended up being you know a very difficult situation where you're getting in uh, these Pokemon who have just absolute hard counters on Mug's side, and you're you're getting no momentum going because all you can do is you know click Brick Break to break screens, but then like who really cares uh, if you're not doing any damage in return because you're not setting up, and. It eventually kind of led to um, a situation where Vileplume comes out and there's literally none, no Pokemon left of the four because the only Pokemon that was threatening the Vileplume was a uh, Volcanion, who he let, who he hard switched in on Hoopa Unbound of all Pokemon, and I think Vileplume is the most important Pokemon this match, so losing it is just crazy that early, and it ends up being that Vileplume literally just sits there and stonewalls you know, the final four Pokemon, because there's uh, nothing he can do. I think the game plan ended up being, you know, not the greatest. I like Hitmonlee in this match. Like, I think the setup was pretty good. But, um, I, I, I think it just, it, it just, an unpreparedness for how fat Mug's gonna play it, I guess is the best way I could put it. He, he had uh, no game plan for the raw level of fatness that was about to be put on display. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I um I after reviewing the match again too, I saw like he did like he did like a like a support dragapult with like U turn and light screen and stuff like that. Like I feel like like you said like bringing setup would have been the best um against him. Uh, against, yeah, I don't hate her. support dragapult for the setup. Like you could have yeah. brought support, but he didn't even use the screens to set no, up. The only no. setup mod he had was real Hitmonlee, and he used that way too late, in my opinion. Yeah, I think w what actually could have helped a little bit more too is like I know it's like there's a Vileplume and a Corviknight, but if you wanted to do like screen stuff as well, like I know Sylveon gets both the screens. Um, that could have been an option to help with that. Um, I know uh, he didn't bring. Darkrai. Darkrai is another really good setup mon. Like, you just get one nasty plot off, and it's really hard to switch into it. I, I know. Um, so, just bringing screens without really, like, trying to set up besides, like, Hitmonlee is um, not... You know, it's... It, he 
he did he had he had some kind of like plan in his head of like what do you want to do i don't know if he just didn't expect like he didn't even i don't even think mug teared the vile plume like it just stayed normal no the she she teared the uh hoopa yeah the, no uh, it, it just she just lost a vile plume like re- like vile plume literally got like what five five did it get five four kills? four kills he got four okay. kills in the end hoopa got one and i think uh someone else picked up the other so I, I think it was just uh, a lack of understanding of what Mug does and a lack of an ability to deal with how fat the team would end up being that yeah. uh, Caterpies uh, ended up. Caterpies is new this season, right? This is the uh, he, he's, he's a promote from Sunset. Promote? Okay, so he was in Sunset last season. Yeah, so it's a, you know, an interesting situation. I do think Volcanion was the win con and letting it go down early was a, a really unfortunate situation. Uh, it, it was a big loss. I, I think, you know, it's a welcome to Stargazer moment. Even though Mug was in Sunset last season, I do think Mug is a Stargazer player. So, yeah, um, I mean, she did drop down, like, mid-season to take over a team. Just yeah. Cause, just cause. Yeah, so yeah. I think uh, I think this is, like, a welcome to Stargazer moment. I think Cat- Caterpies can bounce back. I think they're a pretty decent player, pretty good. So um, I, I, I'm excited to see, you know, what they can do in the future. Maybe, uh, you know, bring Darkrai next time. I thought Darkrai was okay this match with, like, Hypnosis Nasty Plot. Basically, any setup, I think, could have been good this match. Um, yeah, uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that, we'll move on to the team at number 10. The Crown Point Titans. All right. So this was a really interesting one because I thought, uh, you know, he had a really good chance of winning this game and he even was close to winning it if he didn't miss a Focus Blast. Granted, it was a Focus Blast through Paralysis. Granted, it was a Paralysis that he got that turn. So, you know, a lot of luck at the end of this game that kind of didn't go his way. But um, I do think there were a couple of things that uh, he didn't do necessarily correct. All of, like, the mid-game, or the beginning of the game, I thought was going okay, but then he got called on Bramblegast with Dawn Fan, and I think the Dawn Fan was played incorrectly pretty much completely. He got called on Dawn Fan and hit, uh, got knockoff hit when, you know, on Dawn Fan, uh, I, I, I think going Bramblegast isn't, like, necessarily what you have to do. I think it's a little risky, uh, in my opinion, especially when you have an Aloma Mola, um... As one of your Pokemon, like I get, you want to keep it healthy for Roaring Moon, but I really think uh, you can afford to go it on Dawn Fan, especially when you're already knocked off. Um, I do uh, w- question the Satitan. I, 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 because he explained it to me, so I know why he did it. He went to Titan because, you know, if the Dawn Fan had no speed, even at plus one speed, he would outspeed and then he would win after he got the belly drum with his ice skill spirit to Titan. I still question the... Uh, I, I feel like you still do it in snow, just to be safe. You know what yeah. I mean? You get the defense boost in snow, you get the speed boost, just to be safe. Because I think the Titan is such a like massive win con and it does just win the game if it gets the belly drum off successfully and like outspeeds the next turn. Just save this a Titan. Just be sa- you're he's playing safe the whole game, and then all of a sudden, like in a two turn span, he goes hard Bramblegast on Don Fan, which is you know a pretty risky play, and then follow that by go- by going to Titan on Don Fan and just risking that he has no sp- like it's just s- super safe for twenty two turns, and then a random hard turn into su- two really risky plays that end up you know not ter- working out for him at all. Uh, and then he was down six, uh, four, and it, it looks bad, obviously, because it's really hard to see how, uh, you're going to win from that position. And he claws it back because Natty is playing pretty passive and not predicting at all. So he can kind of just go to his regenerator mons, get the chip he needs to, uh, you know, whittle down Dawn Fan and kill it or whittle down Moon or whittle down, uh, Mesprit. And it kind of comes down to Magnazone and, you know, uh, Diancy ends up, you know, getting a few kills because of Meteor Beam, but I think Diancy was a worse win con than Satitan, so he ends up, you know, blowing the Satitan win con early and tries to go for a Diancy to do the big damage, but it doesn't work as well because he ends up taking a lot of damage early from an Energy Ball, and he's just unable to, you know, fully take advantage of, uh, like, he gets two kills, but he's not able to fully take advantage of the Diancy under Trick Room, like Sid Titan would have been able to take advantage of Snow. And he ends up not having any way of really being able to kill a Magnazone. 
uh, because you know his last few mons are so ends up being so passive, and it, it comes down to a focus blast hit, and he just doesn't hit it. You know that's kind of the way focus blast works. Uh, I, I think he was like literally two turns away from winning this game pretty handedly. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I still have him. I think I dropped him one spot, so not too bad. I think this was like played pretty okay from him every turn except like two turns where he really, you know, fumbled Bramble Guest into fumbling Satitan. What do you think of Valiance? Yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. I know the, the last, um, the end game got pretty close when it was just uh, Roaring Moon and magnazone left on the field but magnazone at, le at that point like it hadn't teared yet and it was it, it kind of won pretty handedly there at the end um the uh the like you said earlier about not trying to get snow up like i, I feel like that's i mean that's really the whole point of so titan is that's why you have galarian snow like you you pick galarian slow king first and then you're like oh yeah let's also get a mon that could abuse snow like which because then that's what the titan is for and if you don't do what it like what the team was made for which it kind of hurts a little bit um i think it he did play well um for the most he, he did play well like it, it was it was a long it was a long match um Obviously, there's a lot of mistakes there. The the bramble gas switch in, which I don't um, fully get that one, but uh, it's something where it's like, um, yeah. I mean, I, I understand uh, he went yeah. bramble gas to catch an earthquake. but yeah. There's so many moves Don Fan can click, like you know, ice spinner. Don Fan just has off. he just has so much utility in his kit that it's. Um, I mean, it, it feels like gotta, a Lomomola is just way safer. Yeah, no. So, I'm, there's not much Don Fan can really do against Mola. Um, so yeah, that that is definitely the best option, especially with a regenerator mod as well. Especially because it was already knocked off, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Because um, Bramble Guest was actually doing stuff that game. It was pretty good. So losing it was kind of a a decent blow, I would say. I think it was like you know, it's not it wasn't uh, the greatest thing to have happen. Yeah, I think uh, what what did actually what could have actually had a good matchup this week is um, uh, Hisuian Zoroark if you could play if you can play it very well. Um, I know, like, the illusion shenanigans don't, like, always work, but it's still, like, a strong and fast mod, and the normal the normal ghost typing is just so good. Um, obviously, you don't want to get caught by, like, a knockoff or something like that, but it is a... It, it's not... It, is it fast? It's not faster than Roaring Moon, is it? No. I don't not, think so. Not, not, not even close. I think it's 119 to 110. I guess kind of close, but Yeah, it's, still. It's, it, it's, it's still fair. It's fairly close for, like, um, I don't know if... I'm assuming Roaring Moon would be almost maxed, to be, but it, it does have like a. I, I could see potential this week, like that it could kill a few mons and stuff like that. Um, the so Titan play, obviously. I know um, it. Diancy came in and got like a mini sweep towards the end, killed a couple mons as well, brought it down to like a, a 2 0. So it didn't. Uh, it at least helped the deficit a little bit more. Yeah, like with that. my Diancy was good, but I think he reversed the order. I think Diancy should have come out earlier. Yeah. And Ben and the one to break, and then Titan sweeps in the end game at the end, and I think that yeah, probably would have ended once, up working. Once there's enough like chip on on most of the mons too, like Dancy, obviously, yeah, I can go down. Uh, does it? Did it set up? Um, what set up the? Oh yeah, uh, the Sloking set up the trick room. Sloking was, was both the snow setter and the trick room setter, so it was very important. That's probably why I wasn't coming out a lot early game. Uh, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Obviously a loss, you know, focus blast miss, unfortunate. Uh, but you, you played pretty good most of the turns. Only like two turns, I would say two or three turns that I would take back. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to the team at number nine. Your opponent this week, the Muchin Embors, who I think moved up in this list, if I'm remembering correctly. I think I had them at 11 or something last time, or maybe even 12. Uh, they played pretty good. You know, they had some cool sets. Conkelder, Focus Sash lead to deal with Azelf. Pretty cool. You know, it, it trades at least. And it, uh, stops Azelf from getting rocks up if it's, uh, you know, if Focus Sash lead rocks. Because if it goes for rocks, then you have the Focus Session guaranteed get it, uh, get it, and you'd be at full health. So, you know, you could either trade or get the rocks up, but you can't do both. Um, he had some, you know, tech on some mons. Uh, Dragology was a jack pack for some reason that we will never know. Uh, Calm Mind Sub Suicune. I think that was something we saw in Mox and we never even made an answer for and it ended up working. 
uh, I did uh, I did change over the because I didn't really have much to do. Like I was trying to find like a, a roar mon or like an encore mon to like help a little bit with that. Um, I eventually was like, oh, uh, I got a luring voice on um, an amorous did help um, a, a bit towards the end there. So it helped to whittle it down a little bit more so I could take it out. Uh, yeah, he, he told me afterwards that um, the Suicune was really just there to like uh, it. It was like I don't. F it's because obviously Lantern pretty like hard counter. He, he wanted to freeze um, it, right? Is that what yeah? That, that was his, that was his plan. Is like his his plan was to try to just freeze the Lantern. He was just like to not fight the Lantern. That was his plan um, to to deal with it. He told me that he made the like the team like that day too he didn't really like prep that much but i i mean i still obviously i yeah. almost lost but yeah i think he played pretty good in this match you know lando was very threatening bundle was very threatening i think you know more times out of 10 he actually wins that game without a crit uh if his dragology had didn't have that item he probably won that game so it, pretty 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 good showing from Moochin. He's just at nine because you know he did end up losing a couple misplays. You know Lander is clicking U-turn on Sarah Ledge. Uh, Dragalgy, I guess uh, the Dra Dragalgy not losing its item earlier. Um, I'm thinking like Bundle. Uh, did he click Hydro into Lantern at one point? I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't. I don't think so. No. Like okay. Hydro into Cerulege and Cerulege just killed it. Yeah, Cerulege lived. Uh, is that all it uh, did? So yeah, it, the sweep set obviously worked. It was good. Was it? Do you think? Um, he was like scarf bundle or something like that. Because I don't know if uh, I wonder if I would have died if it was a specs. Uh, I think he was a uh, probably scarf. If I had to guess. But yeah, I mean, still pretty decent showing all around. Obviously, a lot of Pokemon end up doing nothing because they ended up being victims to uh, Sarah Ledge in the end. The crit was very huge, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Meloetta ended up doing nothing, you know, for better or worse. Uh, got swept by a Sarah Ledge. Probably the best Terra we allow right now. So, you know, there is that. Uh, not too much to say. I think he played fine. Uh, got a little bit lucked. Uh I, I think, you know, a, a slight incline, despite losing a slight jump in ranking is probably, is just, I think it's justified. And I think that's where we're going to sit him for now, here at number nine. Yeah, yeah I, I like, um, I guess the only thing with this team, I know he's got visions, he's got a, he, he does different sets and stuff each week, like not like the norm and stuff like that. So I, I guess I'll have to see what his plans for his Terramons are in the future, just because I don't know how well they'll do for the most part but we'll i guess we'll have to see what what he plans to do because i know i feel like bastiodon is kind of useless without terra like it, it kind of doesn't really do anything especially in like a like a draft format at least yeah for sure all right yeah w without without terra i think bastiodon's pretty bad for sure yeah. i think his terras all around are weird except meloetta um I wish uh, Malamar wasn't here, I think. Uh, but, you know, I, I do think this team can do some, like, wacky stuff. So. Yeah, maybe even, like, Terra. Because Terra. You can do Terra Dragology. Maybe he could, like, shift his Terra points around a little bit. I don't know if yeah, that maybe. would be a little bit better. Adaptability with Terra is, like, slightly. It, 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 the slightly damage nerfed, output right? is slightly nerfed, yeah. yeah. But Dragology with Terra is still, like, a pretty decent option. Yeah. But uh, we'll move on to number eight. All right, the Warchester Whoopers, who I think I moved down slightly despite winning. Probably like one spot, I think. Um, I think they played okay. They ended up winning because of a Focus Blast miss, so, you know, there is that. I do think Enamorous probably should have came to this game. Um, they took advantage of a little bit of misplay, in my point, from, in my, in my point of view, from uh, Crown Titans. I, I think, you know, they ended up just doing, you know, fine. They they, they played how they needed to play, in my opinion. Really, the, the movement down was just because I moved one team up. Um, I, I think, like, you know, the team itself is still decent. I think it's still pretty good. 
not like, like I like uh, the Terra Magna zone obviously worked here. It got four kills, I think, in the end, which is, you know, kind of crazy. Uh, Don fan did what it was supposed to do. It got two kills. It, that was pretty good. Um, Mesprit, you know, got rocks up, was kind of like a mini wall. Um, th th there's no like super amazing plays that stood out to me, in my opinion, from this game. Just kind of, you know, standard play from Warchester, in my opinion. I, I, I did think that they were going to lose in the end to uh, Satitan, but luckily for them, it did get uh, sacked. Good prediction on the Bramblegast with the knockoff, obviously. Uh, he kept getting his rocks up despite the spins, which was, you know, pretty good for him. Uh, he spun away Spikes himself, I believe, if I remember correctly. And then used that speed to get Earthquake off. So really just... He had like two turns that really just turned the tide of the game completely in his favor. And then at the end of the game, he wasn't really predicting at all. He was just you turning around until everything on, you know, the other side really just couldn't do anything. I think this is the first team that won that's uh, on the list. So, um, I, I, I it just pretty, pretty standard, not like a great showing, not like great predictions, but just enough, especially with the Don fan to get the win. A uh, good speed on Don Fan to outspeed this uh, Satitan. It really worked out in the end. Uh, just, just a pretty standard, you know, win uh, showing from the Worcester Roopers. Yeah, I like. Um, I, I, I feel like the you didn't really get to use the, the Skarmory that much, but I, I wonder if the Skarmory was for like Satitan, like to be like a, an answer to it a little bit, just for like the high defense. I, I, probably enough to, live at least something, right? Um, yeah, the issue is it was Icicle Spear, so oh, yeah, Icicle yeah, that... Spear does kill because the sturdy gets broken. Yeah, that makes sense. He doesn't have a... let's see. No, there's no, like... yeah, I don't... I guess I don't really see any, like, super, like, bulky mon enough to, like, live that kind of uh, barrage from Satitan, so... Uh, but yeah, no, he definitely he definitely played well, um, definitely took advantage of his opponent a little bit more than... Uh, then he helped him for sure um the uh the araquanid i know uh it didn't go for sticky webs right like he didn't he didn't do that at all uh no uh he, so. he didn't go for sticky webs i'm pretty sure yeah um that's that's not that's not he doesn't have to do that every week i just know that's like one of the like what araquanid likes to do the araquanid got um, two off that game yeah it, it got what off? Two uh, sticky webs off that game. Okay, so it did. It just got. Oh, it did. It just got removed. I think they got spun. Yeah. yeah, they got spun away. A really long game. It was like you know a whole bunch of stuff happening without anything really happening. Mm -hmm. I do uh, when I look at the uh, the team a little bit too. I maybe a little bit, maybe like there's some room for improvement. Maybe like to mix it up a little bit more. I know, like I like the the top mons. Um, especially um, when you get down to like the bottom row, they're like, I like Magnazone. I don't know a hundred percent how this team can like take advantage of using like Ice Q or really like what Bennett is kind of like there for. Maybe just because like they didn't have a ghost type yet, so they just kind of took it. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure because I, it's, I feel like Bennett struggles to do m much of anything really. Uh, but and I'd like Ice Q as well. It also needs like setup and prep time, and it's pretty easy to to prep for and counter against because it, it's got like a physical sub, so you can use a special move on it. Um, I think I like the Magna Zone a lot. I haven't because we haven't. Nobody's. This is like one of the first times people someone's picked Magna Zone, right? Since uh, yeah, one of the first really times like, I've seen it. Yeah, it's just it's probably also just because it can tear the season. Which is which is good. I, I don't I don't mind it at all. I like um, I like Magnezone a lot. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. I think it can be utilized really well, and I think he utilized it well this game too, being able to wall the last few Mons with it um, with Terra Water. I think uh, he had really good showing, and I think in the next few weeks he has uh, room for improvement, but he can definitely keep winning. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're gonna move on to the next team at number seven. Another winner. These Sada Chimps, I believe. Uh, yeah, so the was, Chimps. This was this was the Earthworm game, yeah. Yeah, this was the Earthworm game. Good call on the Moldbreaker Excadrill. You know, good Decidueye bring to trap the DOS. 
uh, and uh, make it pretty much useless. Uh, he got the Tailwind off with Tornadus. That was good, so Kiram could be more effective. I do think it was a Specs Kiram if I had to guess. You know, Slow King was used well against the Tauros, and then ultimately back into Kiram to get the defense boost. He uh, he did what he had to do. Went in. I was pretty impressed. I think you know he played pretty good. Having Blizzard on the Kiram really put on a lot of uh, offensive pressure that uh, I think the opponent wasn't ready for. I think, uh, you know, I, I was I was pretty impressed overall with how this yeah, game his, went. His Terra did his job this week too, especially uh, Terra Decidue got the job done um, versus the, uh, what, what was it? It was for the, uh, what the fuck was it again? He oh, it was the, he he got rid of the Deoxys de defense with that didn't really let it do anything because Spirit Shackle had it locked in. Um, I like I do like this team a lot. He actually he's got he's got two he's got a couple of forms of hazard removal too. I think does Tornadus get defog or Decidue? I don't think at all? so. He, Decidue got, does. Decidue, Decidue, Decidue gets it. Yeah, Tentacle yeah, yeah. and Excadrill obviously yeah, both get rapid have, spin. Both get rapid spin. I like the um the mix between like defensive and off offensive mons he has two water types is always fine it doesn't really matter too much especially like tentacruel and slow king tentacruel is a really another really good mon i like i've used in the past too it's a really good utility mon um i know you don't really care for iron boulder too much uh it's i, I can see like I, I do i do think it's good it's probably i think it's the fastest it, i don't know if it's the fastest paradox mon but it, it i i think i don't know if it's iron valiant um or that it might be the fastest one but I, I do like it i know it's like not really great um defensively like it's got a not a really good it's got not a great defensive typing but he's got other things on the team to help a little bit with it um grim snarl is also another important piece to this team i can see him using that utilizing that more in the, the next few weeks uh but overall i i do uh i do like how he played this week um he took again he took advantage of his opponent um Kyurem came in for a nice sweep at the end uh, and ultimately just uh he definitely outplayed his opponent this week for sure yeah for sure mm -hmm. i would agree all right with that we are going to move on to the next game low punnies versus abbotsford agrons All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have the Agrons at sixth, even though they lost, because I do think the Agrons are still a really strong player. They kind of got memed on a little bit by the um, by the uh, uh, low punnies with a with a really cool low uh, a fable set, in my opinion. I really liked this game, but he kind of came back at the end too. It's uh, like his Heatran was kind of putting in work. Unfortunately, he lost his Spectria really early and he couldn't, uh, you know, fully do what he wanted to do with uh, his uh, Sneasler. Although he did get the fling off. That was a good tech, in my opinion. I really appreciated that. Quagsire kind of did what he had to do to uh, be really strong in that game, in my opinion. Um, I was just overall very impressed uh with uh low punnies this game more than like unimpressed with agrons i thought low punnies did a really excellent job of taking advantage of some of agron's weaknesses whether it's his ground weakness whether you know uh it's uh the fable being able to kind of find a way to weasel its way to be a really uh massive threat in the game in my opinion uh i think this game was a uh, uh, just uh incredibly uh interesting overall I want to go look at it again real quick. Because if I remember correctly, he played his Sneasler really well at the end there. I was pretty impressed with his Sneasler play. So like Clefable obviously goes on a tear at the beginning here. He ends up losing his Spectrier. He ends up losing uh, half his Heatran's health before. But he only only losing Spectrier in that position is actually really good in my opinion. I really think that that's a, a positive for him. And that's something that should be uh, taken into account. He didn't proc the weakness policy. He scouted for it. So that was really good. I appreciate that a lot. He got the rocks up too during that. 
which you know uh, put decent pressure on uh, low punnies. He limited the effectiveness of um, iron treads. Low punnies having the grass knot on Azumarill, he didn't see it coming because that is just. But he did call that she wouldn't click grass knot again, so that was nice. Uh, he did get a little lucky with a miss, but you know Sneasler ended up doing really really well in this game. Yeah, the miss um, on the the play rough there. On yeah. The, on the samurai, yeah. So it, it's like he did lose, but considering the position he was put in at the very beginning, I think he kind of played the outs as best he could at the end. He sacked his Sneasler at the end when I thought Sneasler had a chance to win against the Porygon 2. He had to think that this, this thing would have a move. It does get psychic moves, and that's what it had. He had to think it had a move for the Porygon 2. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, this game turned out kind of... I, I think this game turned out uh, better for Agrons than it could have, considering he kind of got uh, stunlocked by the fact by the Clefable set and like the Azumarill Grass Knot. He got out prepped a little bit for sure, definitely. He got out prepped. That's why he did drop, but I didn't drop him too hard because I know he's a great battler. Lopunis is just also a really great battler, and I think you know he he clawed it back from being a devastating loss to being just a pretty okay uh, game in the end. Uh, what do you think, Vancouver? Uh, I I do like Ag Agrons is always a he's a great player every season. I uh, we always go back and forth um, on like winning and stuff like that. And he's always like there, there's a reason he's higher up on this list, even though he lost. Like, um, it's just because of his uh, he always has he always brings great sets every week. He preps really well. Um. I liked a lot of his sets that he did. Um, I know Trap Inch in the future will be a really important piece to this. To his offense on this team, it's gonna, he's probably going to put in work. I, I would honestly be, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the kill leader this season. Um, he, if since Trap he Inch was the so kill high. leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he drafted it so high. Obviously, he wanted <laughs> it's it. It's not going to be the kill leader. Come on, <laughs> no, it, no, it's no, here. No. It's here to trap one thing and get a kill. <laughs> um, but I do, I, I do like his team a lot. He got um. Let's see, you did get Spectre. What was the that I know that was in the lower division. I know the someone in the lower division got um Dragapult and Spectre because like there was like two people that weren't um that weren't there during the draft. So like someone just got like two first round picks basically and like kind of built their team around that. Um but I do I do like his team a lot. He he definitely um he definitely built around Spectre, like the uh the sets. It it just looking at it like like i feel like i i've seen this team before like it definitely feels like a like an abbotsford um yeah team. Um, he, he's got some of his greatest hitters here he's got heatran he's got yeah. uh i think he had quag in season two he's got samurott he had that in one of the seasons he had cyclozar in one of the seasons uh i don't remember if he had sneezler i don't think so uh i think he had arbeliva i don't remember though yeah but, he um, even got like sneezler like in and He's got the weekend. terrain. Like, yeah, yeah he's, he's got the, the seed sower. Um, on it the, all makes uh, sense. This, team, this team is pretty strong. It's pretty good, in my opinion. I like it. Yeah, I like the utility. I, I can see, like, Terra Espeon maybe getting, like, a like a sweep one week or something like that. Like, if it catches his opponent off guard. Um, Terra Arbeleve is also uh, really good. I, I've seen um, some really, like, high-level play from Terra Arbeleve in draft leagues. It's, it's, it's a really good mon. Um, especially for the value you get, like uh, how uh, what the points were. Um, how do you feel about like uh, Fez and Dippity? Do you think it's like? I think uh, Fez is a pretty good disruptor. It's a pretty good status yeah. distributor with poison. You know, it got it's got pretty decent coverage. It's got fire coverage. It has double kick technician fighting coverage. Uh, I, I don't like. I don't dislike Fez and Dippity. I like. Yeah, it has it, roost. I think it's it, kind of good. It's got a lot of different um, like texts and stuff that you can you can run on it. Um, I think. Azuian Samurai kind of just does the same job every week. Like I don't know how many how much different that thing can be. Um, but overall I, I do think he, he definitely played well this week. It's just um I think he's probably he's playing against like one of the top three battlers probably in in the PBO. So I mean it's it's always up in the air of like who's gonna win when like two like high high tier opponents go off against each other. Um I Looking at like his next, uh, like his schedule, I think he could go on like a little bit of a tear with this team. Um, he's got really, 
really great uh, options on this team. I don't see really much room for like improvement. I don't know if he wants to make any like swaps or anything like that, but I, th I think he's got a really good team going forward. Yeah, I agree. I think this team's definitely quite strong. Um, we're going to move on to the team at number five. And that's a very high jump. I think the highest jump of the week. The Sunnyside Sque Suicunes. Uh, very impressive 4-0 win. We've talked about the game already. Vioplume completely stonewalled. Uh, you know, uh, everyone did its job. I think this team is just Mug in her element. And when Mug's in her element, she's really, really good. She's like a, an above average Stargazer player, which is where I have her, right? I, I think with this team, it, it doesn't look very good on paper, but the damage output, the speed, it's actually there this time. The hazard removal, it's there this time. And the fat is still there. The, the known Mug fat is still, you know, sitting there you know, salivating, ready to go. So I'm, a. Uh, I I I was very impressed with this game because she won and she won her way, even though a brick break came out. Uh, I, I think if Mug keeps playing within the flow of, like, herself, confident in her team and, like, these Pokemon that she's so experienced with, uh, she can stay at around this rank. Uh, I, I, I think she's really, you know, picked up a, a, a squad that really plays to her strengths very well. Uh, I think I have, well, just a side note, I think I have the wrong, wrong doc, I think, because I thought I was facing Mug next week, but it looks like I'm not. <laughs> um, That's tough, because I, I made I don't a know team. If, well, I know, but I I, I was I, I was looking at it, and I don't think I, I don't think I have the right one. I'll I'll, I'll get it after we're, we're done. Um, I'll, I'll see who I'm actually facing this week. It's uh, low punnies. I just saw yeah, it. Oh, great. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I have the, I don't know what this one is. It's Maybe it's just the the wrong one, but all right, you can continue. Sorry for yeah. I mean, I'm I'm looking to hear your. Uh... Oh, sorry. Um, I uh, I saw, after watching the match too, I did not expect just normal Vileplume to like do that much. I know Mug really likes her really bulky teams. Um, we talked earlier about when we were talking about uh, the uh, Caterpie's team. Um, she's got a lot of pieces here she's got her offensive pieces like cinderace and like cobalion i think like maybe like shell smash blastoise could do something and thunderous theory is always like a really good like could be scarf could be specs some other kind of set um like that it's just a good like pivot slash like really high damage mon um that you can bring um i could even see like dust clops being brought like a couple weeks and of course Terra Poopa Unbound too is also like really nasty as well with the getting rid of its really bad typing and being able to turn into something um, so it's not weak to it doesn't get one shot by U-turn or something like that. It's just uh, it, it helps it helps a lot for sure. Um, obviously the team's a little bit bulkier than it usually is. Um, there is uh, weaknesses in the fact that um, it could be easy to set up on like we mentioned earlier. Um, but it does have uh, um, good pieces to be able to like. I I think this season maybe she's might be able to prepare a little bit more for uh, f facing setup. I think. Yeah, for sure. I think she's more prepared for it. I think she should bring Whirlwind to Tingaloo more than she has before in the past. I would recommend it or Roar Blastoise. Either one works. But. Uh... I, I, I like where Mug's at this season. I like her team. I like her headspace. I think she can make a run. I am I think she's positioned for one. And with that, we'll move on to the team at number four. Oh, I wonder who that is. The Vancouver Valiants. All Ooh. right. The Vancouver it's Valiants. Uh, it's me. Actually went down two spots, I think. Uh, <laughs> they were losing this game. I'm acting like he's not here. Yeah, they were losing this game, a majority of it. But Terra Serulege... And a little bit of luck is all you really need. Uh, it's such a dominant Terra. I think it's the best. It, it or Zarude are the best I, Terra I, we allow. I, I'm so I'm so happy I get to use it this season. I'm gonna. I think Terra Serulege is so crazy. Bitter Blade is a really broken move for a setup sweeper because you can just always get your health all the way back up, and then they have to kill you all over again, pretty much. And you're doing massive damage with it. Uh, I think you know uh, Lantern was pretty good this game. I wish. Because uh, I, I just rewatched the replay. I wish he just kept the Lantern in and just spammed Discharge if Ice Beam was all the Suicune had. And, uh, like, 
if he got burned, went for Scald after. Yeah, <laughs> instead I, I of, didn't, uh, I, instead I, of I, sacking I, three Mons essentially I, to Suicune. I, I I realized that after I didn't because I didn't really know what his plan was because in in mocks and stuff like that I've done like Suicune, it was Shadow Ball. It yeah. had like Shadow Ball on it to like deal with Lantern. I still think like, like keeping Lantern in on it was better than sacking essentially like three Pokemon to yeah. Uh, I, I I understand to Suicune. It, but it, it worked out in the end because of the sets that Membors was running and Sarah Ledge's raw uh, goadedness. Just pure power. I love Sarah Ledge. Uh, you know, it's still a very, very strong team. You know what I mean? Doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. Very powerful physically and kind of specially too with Greninja and Enamorous and Azelf at times and Hydrapple. Um, you know, Great Tusk is always going to be a threat. Uh, Lantern, I think, is a pretty important glue piece here, and I think it's actually pretty good. I think people underestimate how good Lantern is. Um, Revavroom didn't even hit the field, I think, but it's still, you know, a pretty good Pokemon. Uh, and obviously, you know, Weezing and Wigglytuff, uh, pretty good support pieces in the back. Two other fairies. That, uh, uh, I know. do have three fairies on this team, but that's, that's right. It's the best type in the game. Yeah, fairy is just goaded. Um, I like... I. I dare say this is the best team i've drafted i don't know if you could corroborate on that um for my past few seasons uh um, it, it might be i do really like the team from last season but that team required like very precise uh ways of playing that i think this team doesn't i think this team can open up a little bit i, I think that at, at least this season this i feel like this team is more my my play style of what i'm more used to just because I, I like I like setup. I like just strong mons. I'm, I'm glad I got Great Tusk. I've, I've been wanting to use it. Um, my just a really nice mon that I could just bring every single week. Um, and just it has so many different like ways you can use it and has great utility and it's just really, really strong. I, yeah. it's, it's great. Um, being able to get Greninja as well, just like that. Um, the secondary strong, fast special attacker, like my a breaker um, that I can use. Uh, during the week, um, Sarah Ledge obviously is my like premier Terra captain. Um, Enamorous is another uh, just great piece to this team. Just being able to uh, either re it's fast, it's strong, it's got. I've used it in the past too. It's uh, it's I've had success with it as well. It's just a another really nice uh, fairy type to the team and Azelf as well too. Where I, I did I didn't use it for what I, I initially planned. I was just like it. Obviously, Con Calder came out first. So I was like, all right, I just got to fire off a psychic here. I didn't know what exactly he was going to do. I guess the, uh, um, I guess the, uh, the Con Calder obviously was there for the Azelf specifically. That's what they were talking about. I did, sorry, yeah. did you record a, did you record a video for that match? Yeah, we did. Uh, uh, yeah, because okay. I, I, I want to, I, I'm, I look forward to seeing your guys' reaction to, um, to that match. Really, the main thing we were stuck on was the first turn double sash. We were like, yo, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> and uh, another thing to note is that it was 17, 18 turns and seven minutes long. So it was a very yep. quick game. That that's that's how I roll. I don't like long matches. I don't like being drawn mm -hmm. out. I either want to get swept or I just win the match and like. 20 turns or less i, I, I do not you did get swept there. a lot last season so uh true. luscious lopinis yeah, when you play vancouver next week that. play it slow <laughs> bring dig on the yeah. cliff no. able. bring dig on that no. cliff able. <laughs> bring dig on that cliff able also vancouver you play mug week four not week two. yeah i see that yeah. I, I see that now i'll, I'll have to I'll yeah, have he to must have just gone down bit. It's, it's fine. Down. I made I made a team already. There's no reason to delete it. I'll just save it for when I need for when I need to make it. All right. So yeah, uh, like not bad from Vancouver. Obviously, he still won, but the, the play wasn't like out of this world. So he did drop two spots. Hey, if but, I if I beat L uh, Lopenies this week, then you got to move me up. I think. Yeah. You know, I, I'm just saying. I I, I agree. <laughs> but you have to beat him first. I do. Uh, I do. Let's right, move let's on to, to the three. team at number three. All right, Tennessee Tyranitars, uh, the guy who just did his game today, uh, kind of uh, proved that, you know, he has a game plan going in. He knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to get his hazard up. He wanted to make sure the Claude Zyre wasn't unaware. And then he brought in Terrapagos and just went crazy. He went for the, for the sweep. I think, you know, some misplays from the... Uh, from the Norwalk Noiverns really helped him out here. But I do think he played pretty well. You know, he uh, 
was kind of losing at the beginning, a little bit on the back foot. His okidogi got low. He was, uh, you know, getting knocked off. Incineroar was putting in a lot of work. But I do think he had the best play of the of the season so far. It is only week one where he encored the Incineroar into knockoff to knock off his Tinkaton's item and then steal the heavy duty boots from the Incineroar with a rock and a spike up. So the Incineroar would have to take the rocks and the spike, essentially killing it which I thought was a very, very smart play from the Tyranitars. Uh, probably th the best and most creative play so far this season. I liked it a lot. Um, the Rotom Wash was Rocky Helmet. That makes a lot of sense for Jirachi, because I think Jirachi had a pretty good chance of sweeping with Iron Head this week if Tyranitars wasn't careful. But especially at the end there when Wash was getting low. In my opinion, when Tropicus was out on Jirachi, he should have just clicked Iron Head. Um... But, you know, uh, Meowskarada did its job. It uh, threatened some stuff out, and it got a spike up. I, I think it was just, you know, a, a nice, clean game from Tyranitars. Knew his win con and ended up getting... It wasn't a 6-0 because he lost Okidogi in the process, but ended up getting a 6 uh, kill streak with the Tarapagas. So, you know, a 6-0 sweep, at least, from Tarapagas. And uh, they sit firmly at the kill leader spot with their Tarapagas. Uh, just a really well-played, clean game from Tyranitars, from a team that's, you know, employing the eight strong mons method with, you know, three unevolved guys. A method that me and Za both really like. I think it works really, really well, uh, making it so you have a bunch of low pointers so you can get the best high pointers possible and create the best team of six possible, because only six Pokemon can really come every week. So, um, I, I, I think um, Tyranitars is positioning themselves really well. I like the way Metal plays. He plays uh, with, like, a goal in mind for what he wants to do at the end. So even if things are looking a little rough in the middle or the beginning, uh, the end game becomes clear for what he wants to do. It, the path opens up, and he finds a way. And uh, I'm uh, glad to see him up here at number three. Yeah, th this is... um he, he is actually a new addition this season, right? Like yeah, he, he's brand he new. Hasn't been in he's a, he's a, he's okay. a fan, friend of Orange. Okay. Yeah, no, I... I... I see. What, I saw what you mean by like he sees like the line and stuff like, like that. Like he obviously he had a game plan going into it to try to like sweep with Tropagos because Miascarada wasn't even used as like a breaker, which most of the time it is. Like it's like choice band or something like that, and it just kind of fires off like really strong flower tricks or other whatever other moves it goes for. But he obviously wanted to get that. Um, Tropagos and I forget what the the other mons. Let me see what he brought. I'm trying to see like if somehow the Tropagos failed. He definitely he he definitely had some mons to fall back on. Maybe like a set up Dragonite or something like that. Whatever. Um, he probably had another contingency just in case the Tropagos didn't work out. But he definitely did what he wanted us to and like what he set out to do this week was really well. Like Tropagos is just a uh, at least from seeing. It, I haven't used it that much and like either like just on like normal showdown or something like that but it, it seems like a mon that actually can it puts on a lot of pressure especially with its ability and like it's really good like move coverage and things like that it's got it's got a lot of um hill power that you wouldn't expect it to have like it, it look it almost looks more like a utility mon than it does but it's really strong and at, at the end of the day yep and with that we will move on to the number two team in the uh, power rankings. And the top two teams are the top two teams that I think dominated the power rankings last season, too. At number two, we have the Luscious Lil Punnies. And she's back to her old tricks, coming up with a team that looks good, but, like, not amazing. But coming up with the most creative, like, well-crafted, like, you think it won't work, and then it ends up working sets. Uh, the Grass Knot Azumarill, the Dig Power, Stored Power Clefable, great, great stuff. You know, the Glass Dreer was really good this match, really strong, gets its kill. Uh, Treads, obviously really good, because the opponent only had one ground resist and no ground immunities. Porygon 2 with the Psy Shock, really good bring. It, it just a, a very impressive showing from Low Ponies. Even though the game ended up being close, it was a 2-0 victory. It felt like she had control from the jump after the Clefable started doing what it was doing. It always felt like she was, you know, commanding how the game was going. I think she sacked her Blaziken essentially for fun in the middle of this game. She was kind of trolling a little bit. Um, 
she was trying to show off the Blaziken set, uh, predicting a recover on Quag. It clicked Earthquake anyways, but uh, she she it, it felt like she she kind of um was toying with her food a little bit, which is crazy to do to Abbotsford. It kind of just shows her level of skill, you know, that she is able to do get into a position to do that in one of these games. Um, I, I, I was very impressed with her uh, play here. Uh, her ability at the end game, even when things were a little scary, to still uh, pull it out with Porygon 2 and Treads, uh, it, it was it was really quite impressive in my opinion. Preserving the Azumarill really well so it can put on the pressure against the Quagsire. Uh, I, I, I think she played this game uh, very well, even with a little bit of trolling in the middle. Uh, what do you think, Vancouver? Yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously she she plays really well. Um, even being able to just being just the level she has to be able to like control almost every like stage of the game and like from the beginning, middle, and to the end. Like she always, even even if um, she felt a little like bleak towards the middle with like Heatran and something like that, it always felt like she was in control like the whole match and just kind of was able to still um, come out on top uh, at, towards the end of it. Um, and I can just I can just see this team, like especially Terra Glastier being back. I had Kilowattro last season. It was a, another really good Terra option in this team as well, too. Um, just a lot of uh, scary um, setup as well as like just strong like breaker mons that can kind of like uh, not even just not even just that too just like the bulk as well like porygon 2 is really bulky wheezing can be bulky spite ups is more like utility but other than those mons and like obviously clefable as well can either be like offensive or bulky depending on like the week's matchup and things like that but a lot of really good like utility breaker and just all around like bulky team to like round out this team to like have, have a nice like just type coverage, um, defensive type matchup, and things like that, and just utilizing the the Terra system really well, um, just kind of rounds out the team um, all together. And um, I can see her obviously making the playoffs and going really far that well because she did go to the the finals last season. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No. So she's, you know, she's just got a good standard team. Mary stuff. Really six sets. The Clefable set is the best set we've seen so far, in my opinion. Uh, I, you know, we've talked about it, like, theoretically, it doesn't actually, like, work, uh, people say, uh, because the, it didn't get the weakness policy off, but it did work, you know what I mean? It, it killed a Spectrier in the end of the day, so I, I, I was very impressed because, you know, having it work in-game, even if, like, theoretically it shouldn't work, uh, ends up being more impressive to me than, like, any theoretical thing. I'm always impressed by Mary's sets, I'm always impressed by her play. Uh, just, just very impressive, very worthy of a top two spot. And with that, we will move on to number one. So when your number one team pre power rankings, uh, ends up winning five Oh, I don't see any reason to change it. So we're going to keep the Frederick Klefkies at the number one overall spot with a dominant win over the lion city leech life. Uh, Deoxys Speed, instantly two kills at the beginning. Initially meant to counter a Vicka uh, works out really well and just gets two instant kills. Uh, really, really good game plan there. Garchomp, uh, there to take on, uh, Palmont. He called Scar Scarf Palmont, that ends up being what came. A red card in Polion ends up letting Empoleon get a kill on the two cannon. It was putting a lot of pressure on two cannons. Sword Stance Sarud puts on pressure on Fortress. You, you know, Overheat on Talonflame does a big chunk to uh, Ursaluna Blood Moon. And a Valiant with Booster Speed ends up cleaning the, up the game at the end. All six Mons kind of coming together to do something at least. They all work together. The He was in control the whole time. Had it, you know, going from the very beginning. Only really had to sack a moon, Mon to Blood Moon just because Blood Moon is such a crazy Pokemon. And uh, I was just a, a dominant showing from start to finish, an all-around team win. As we can see, you know, two kills, two kills, one kill, one kill. Just a, a, a dominant uh, performance, in my opinion, from Clef Keys over the Lion City Leech Life. You can say the Leech Life, you know, brought a weird team and played kind of weird. But still, based on what was shown in the match, it was just um, a, a really, a really cool game. 
from the uh, from the Klefkis, in my opinion. What do you think, Vancouver? Yeah, I like the um, he he played as Empoleon really well. Like just it just was able to just kind of sit there. He didn't like it didn't seem like um, Lion City. I don't know if he just didn't prepare for it or didn't have like a, a direct answer to it without like because it, it just kind of seemed like it kind of sits there and like you don't it didn't he didn't really want to like switch anything specifically in, onto it. Um, his uh, deoxys speed is always good. We, we're allowing we allowed nasty plot this season, right? for it that's yes that's what, it, that's what yeah. it clicked yep. yeah that, that's i i don't I, I forgot already i apologize um and uh valiant is always good i i like that uh, obviously it's my mascot mon i like it a lot um i know uh i haven't seen much of it um we got to see a little bit uh this week but i like zarud um is another good mon especially being able to terra as well with the new terra system and of course he's got belly bolt my absolute nemesis uh but he's here as well um really good solid terror captains i like um the option in the future too with uh uh indeedy um i i think it's a maybe it's a little underrated mon i feel like it's it's decently fast and strong and it, set, it sets up a good terrain especially having dio speed and valiant which can take advantage of like using like an expanding force in the terrain to like um just kind of dominate the the game with a really really strong move um with just really hard special breakers um garchomp being on this team is another great utility mon as well like just the the f i feel like this team probably just looking at it might have the best fairy steel dragon core just in general um like b between the three mons deoxys speed just being there as well just to be another uh could be util but most of the time probably going to be uh, offensive as well um i don't see too many weaknesses on this team maybe maybe ground type a little bit um but he's got a he's got a couple obviously he's got cragonal and talon flame to be able to, to deal with it i feel like ground type's just a hard type to uh to counter if you don't have that um kind of uh that defensive uh capability like just to be immune to it yeah he does have he does have uh his belly bolt will tear us so it can get out of its weaknesses yeah well. he has the, the best terror captains in my opinion by far yeah, i think the best two, belly bolt between are both crazy. of them yeah yeah i think belly bolt and sarud are crazy crazy terror captains um it, it's just a really strong team it doesn't have two like any real weaknesses and it's been piloted so far to uh perfection so i see no reason to to lower uh, orange at all uh, from this number one spot at the moment. Mm. Um, yeah, no, yeah, no, I don't, I don't see much of a, a reason to. He's facing Mushin, Mushin next in the next week, week. Next week, so, so, who, uh, could, who could prepare more and bring like a, yeah. a, a set that he he's does, not expecting? Mushin so. does want to beat orange bad every single yeah. season, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> That'll that that might be your uh, story. You might have to put that as like a, one of the matches of the week or something like that, maybe. We will see yep. what Zonk cooks up with that one. <laughs> all right, I think we are uh, we're all done. We've got we've gone through every team. I like the uh, I'll. Um, I'm glad I was able to to help this week. I I, I don't mind I don't mind doing this. I, I I thought I get it lets one it allows me to look at the teams a little bit more in depth in depth. Um, maybe like for like prep in the future, but I like talking about the teams a lot, and I, I think at least where we're at so now, I think we're in uh, line for a really good season. I think um, every team has potential to be good, has potential to make the playoffs, and just all around, just um, honestly, just make this season one of the best ones we've had so far. So true. Mm -hmm so wise yeah any uh any closing uh statements soaring on this week um i'm just happy it all went to plan and that everyone got i'm i it, it sucks that not every team got their games played but you know it's a tough ask it is and it was that like some of the the lower divisions might have yeah not yeah you know games and in, yeah. it's just things you can't control like players get sick can't play a game yeah, but that's what extensions are for, and I'm just excited to have Season 7 open up with this new Terra system. I'm excited to have content with Ben and whoever he decides to bring on. I'm grateful for y'all two coming on, and 
Just excited for week two. Take it a week at a time. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I look forward to next week. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Popping off. Oh. All right. Is it, that'll end it. Is it. That'll end it, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> I've...